In this book review you will discover the art of propelling yourself toward success through the diverse experiences of James Altucher. Altucher, an individual who has traversed various career paths, showcasing his adaptability. He has ventured into business launches, encountered failures, initiated a venture capital firm and a hedge fund, explored the realm of stand-up comedy, and authored numerous books. Amid financial struggles and times of being broke, Altucher grappled with the challenge of providing for his family, yet each setback served to fortify him. Today, Altucher stands as a triumphant entrepreneur, accomplished writer, and successful investor. Over the course of his varied career, he has honed strategies to pursue his passions and concurrently monetize them. Within these review, we will delve into the intricacies of the methods he has refined, guiding individuals on how to skip the line, effectively abbreviating the path to achieving their goals. As you explore these insights, you will gain knowledge on unconventional approaches to generating ideas and acquiring new skills, discerning the art of selecting the right pursuits, and understanding why failure is not something to be feared but embraced as a catalyst for growth and resilience. Skipping the line involves discovering your passion and rapidly developing proficiency in it. The well-known 10,000 hours rule, conceptualized by Swedish psychologist Anders Ericsson and popularized by Malcolm Gladwell, asserts that achieving mastery in a particular skill requires 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. This involves dedicated and measured practice, feedback from a coach, and a continual cycle of improvement. However, what if circumstances demand swift proficiency without the luxury of investing 10,000 hours? The key insight here is that skipping the line entails identifying what you love and quickly honing your skills in that domain. The backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 highlighted the need for individuals to adapt swiftly to unprecedented challenges. With widespread job losses and business closures, people faced the dilemma of choosing between finding new employment in their current field, changing professions, or exploring entirely different avenues. James Altucher, intimately familiar with the challenges of starting anew, found himself in a similar situation in 2002, no career, no job, and financially strained. However, driven by a desire to become a professional investor and write a book, Altucher adopted a mindset of incremental improvement, aiming to get 1% better every day. In just two years, he successfully managed a hedge fund overseeing millions of dollars while concurrently writing his first book. A few years later, he lucratively sold an investment-related business, achieving significant success. The key to Altucher's rapid transformation lay in re-evaluating the conventional 10,000 hours role. Instead of adhering to the notion that mastery requires an extensive time investment, he focused on swiftly acquiring proficiency in areas aligned with his passion, enabling him to generate income promptly. This approach involved constructing experiments, such as the 1% exercise, to test ideas rapidly and learn from the outcomes. The subsequent review will delve into Altucher's methodology, known as the 10,000 experiments rule. Experimentation accelerates the learning and refinement of skills, as exemplified by Dick Fosbury's groundbreaking approach to high jumping in the 1960s. Fosbury, initially a mediocre high jumper, struggled with the conventional upright scissors technique due to his unique physique. Opting to experiment, he reversed the technique and introduced the Fosbury flop. This unorthodox approach not only allowed him to smoothly clear the bar but also elevated his jumps to unprecedented heights. Fosbury's high school coach initially dismissed the Fosbury flop and even banned it from official competitions. However, witnessing the technique's effectiveness compelled the coach to reconsider, eventually permitting Fosbury to incorporate it into his competitions. This experimental breakthrough propelled Fosbury from mediocrity to winning the gold medal at the 1968 Olympics, revolutionizing high jumping in the process. Importantly, Fosbury's success didn't demand the conventional 10,000 hours of practice. The essence of the 10,000 experiments rule lies in conducting numerous experiments to swiftly test ideas and facilitate accelerated learning. 
By consistently engaging in experimentation, one can witness exponential improvements in knowledge, skills, and career progression in a relatively short time frame. James Altucher's foray into stand-up comedy provides another illustrative example of the power of experimentation. Initially feeling like a novice and grappling with stage fright, Altucher recognized that improvement required trying unconventional approaches, even if they didn't resonate with the audience. Embracing this mindset, he allowed the audience to choose a topic for his jokes, a novel move in the comedy scene. The audience's positive response spurred Altucher to experiment with different comedic styles every night. This persistent experimentation ultimately paid off, propelling him from a beginner to performing at Carolyn's, one of New York City's premier comedy clubs, within a year. To rapidly acquire proficiency in a new skill, consider the strategy of applying knowledge gained from another field, a technique termed borrowing hours by Altucher. This approach is exemplified by the remarkable ascent of Pele, the Brazilian soccer legend, who started playing seriously at the age of 15 and swiftly rose to become one of the most beloved players globally. Pele's ability to accelerate his soccer skills was attributed to his background in futsal, a popular sport in Brazil. Growing up in a financially constrained environment, Pele played futsal, a game played on a smaller court with a smaller ball, demanding increased footwork and passing agility. These skills, acquired in futsal, translated seamlessly to soccer, facilitating a smoother transition. In essence, Pele borrowed hours from one sport and applied them to another, enabling his rapid mastery. The concept of borrowing hours extends beyond sports and can be observed in language learning. Proficiency in one language, such as Spanish, can ease the process of learning another language like Italian, leveraging the grammatical and vocabulary knowledge acquired. Pele's journey underscores the importance of pursuing passion without being fixated on the predetermined outcome. Detachment from immediate results is a crucial aspect of skipping the line. To expedite progress, one must embrace the willingness to explore new avenues without imposing limits or restrictions. This open-minded approach allows for the organic flow of passion, leading individuals in unexpected yet transformative directions. During a challenging period in 2002 marked by financial struggles and bankruptcy resulting from a failed stint as a day trader, James Altucher found himself in a state of depression. Faced with the need to overcome these difficulties, he initiated a transformative process by generating lists of potential ideas to revitalize his career and financial situation. These lists encompassed ideas for businesses, books, articles, and even concepts for other people's ventures, ultimately transforming his ideas into valuable opportunities. The central idea conveyed here is that consistently generating new ideas daily empowers individuals to explore fresh career possibilities. Altucher refers to this process as idea calculus, offering various techniques to stimulate idea generation. One method is idea addition, where an existing idea is enhanced by incorporating improvements. For example, during the global lockdown, Altucher proposed 10 additional features to enhance the video conferencing platform Zoom, subsequently inspiring the creation of a new platform with these enhancements. Idea subtraction involves taking a seemingly unattainable idea and eliminating the obstacles hindering its implementation. Altucher's friend faced challenges in establishing a clothing line in the U.S. due to a lack of manufacturers. The idea subtraction approach suggested creating initial samples in China to validate market demand and then finding a way to produce them in America. Other techniques include idea multiplication, where a successful idea in a specific context is generalized and scaled, e.g., Amazon, idea division, which involves breaking down a grand idea into smaller, more manageable components, e.g., PayPal's focus on eBay before expanding, idea subsets for detailed exploration of specific aspects, and idea sex, the fusion of two existing ideas to create something novel, as exemplified by the iPhone merging a cell phone and iPod. The underlying principle is that innovation doesn't always require entirely new concepts. It can involve building upon or modifying existing ideas to craft something distinctive. 
Consistent ideation exercises, or idea calculus, serve as a catalyst for uncovering novel career paths and opportunities. If you've discovered even a small nugget of value in our content, we would truly appreciate your support through likes, shares, and subscriptions. Make sure to stay tuned till the end for more insightful nuggets, and don't forget to provide us with your feedback. Thanks for being with us. Now, let's get back to the review. Having numerous ideas can be exhilarating, but James Altucher acknowledges that it hasn't always translated into productive outcomes for him. On days when he generated a multitude of ideas without clear direction, he often found himself wondering why he hadn't taken tangible actions. The challenge lay in deciding which ideas or activities to pursue amid the vast array of possibilities, leading to a state of indecision and an inability to progress. The central message here is that being an adept experimenter involves discerning which ideas merit pursuit. While having a wealth of ideas is beneficial, the key is to distinguish between those that hold promise and those that do not. This discernment is crucial for effective time management and ensures a focus on meaningful endeavors. Altucher employs the concept of the conspiracy number when evaluating which ideas to pursue. The conspiracy number represents the number of factors that must align to turn an idea into reality. For instance, if the goal is to write a book and generate income from it, the process involves writing the book, gaining approval from the agent, securing acquisition by a publisher, garnering interest from bookstores, and ultimately achieving substantial sales. This gives writing a book a high conspiracy number of five. Within any idea, there are alternative possibilities with lower conspiracy numbers. For example, instead of writing a book, one could explore options such as creating a podcast, developing an online course, producing a YouTube video, or writing an online newsletter. When evaluating ideas, Altucher recommends listing all potential possibilities for each idea and analyzing the conspiracy numbers associated with each option. Choosing the option with the lowest conspiracy number allows for risk assessment, prioritization, and a focus on ideas that offer the greatest benefits with minimal drawbacks. Matt Berry, a former Hollywood screenwriter, decided to quit his seemingly dream job, leading to significant life changes, including divorce. Despite the challenges, he ventured into a new career by starting a blog about fantasy sports, a niche interest he had cherished since childhood. This unconventional move eventually propelled him to become the first fantasy sports anchor on ESPN, achieving fame and financial success. The key message derived from Matt Berry's experience is that to achieve success, you must identify your purpose. Berry found success by discovering his passion and effectively monetizing it. According to James Altucher, finding the room least crowded is crucial, identifying an empty space or niche within your field and filling it. Contrary to conventional wisdom, making a living from what you love is possible, but the first step is identifying your purpose. Danica Patrick, the highest-ranking female race car driver, provides tips on discovering your purpose. Start by envisioning your ideal day and determining what activities would genuinely engage and fulfill you. Analyzing the photos on your phone may offer clues about your passions. Assessing which activities energize you the most in the past month can further guide you in identifying your purpose. Once you identify your purpose, the next challenge is incorporating it into your daily life. Patrick suggests connecting with a community that shares your passion, learning from others, and finding a mentor. Immerse yourself in the technicalities of your purpose by studying its history and current perspectives to develop a unique voice. Finally, taking action is crucial. Stop overthinking and start doing to bring your purpose to life on a daily basis. The spoke and wheel technique, as exemplified by Amazon's business model, is a key strategy for monetizing your skills and ideas. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, initially started with selling books but expanded into various domains like clothes, electronics, food, and even logistics and cloud infrastructure through Amazon Web Services. Altucher defines this approach as the spoke and wheel method. The core concept or idea is represented as the wheel, and the various revenue-generating channels stemming from it are the spokes. 
For instance, Marie Kondo's KonMari method for tidying up serves as the wheel of her business. The spokes, in this case, include her best-selling book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, a Netflix show, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, a newsletter, merchandise, online courses, and income from public speaking engagements. By diversifying income streams through different spokes, Kondo significantly increased her net worth. Implementing the spoke and wheel method allows you to maximize the potential of a single idea and safeguard against dependence on a sole income source. Whether it's a business idea or a personal interest, jot down all possible spokes associated with it. This exercise not only reveals numerous opportunities but also facilitates easy experimentation with diverse income-generating avenues. It is possible to turn fears into opportunities, as James Altucher discovered in his own life. At the age of 26, Altucher felt like a failure because he was afraid that no one would appreciate his dream of becoming a famous writer. Instead, he took a job at HBO as a software developer. Despite initial difficulties and setbacks, he eventually excelled, showcasing his ability by building a website for HBO in just 48 hours. Altucher learned to transform his fears into opportunities for growth. The key takeaway is that confronting fears and using them as a catalyst for achieving your dreams is a powerful strategy. Altucher, every time he faces doubts about his writing or ventures, turns the fear into a positive force by asking whether it's an opportunity to do something unique or groundbreaking. He acknowledges that growth often arises from pushing boundaries and venturing into the unknown. Altucher doesn't shy away from starting a business or giving a talk unless there's an element of fear involved. He recognizes that if something seems too easy, it likely lacks innovation. Embracing discomfort and fear is a pathway to creativity, growth, and success. Whether it's hitting publish on an article, stepping onto a stage, or experimenting with something new, facing fears can lead to profound personal and professional development. The key message from these insights is that thinking alone won't lead to success. You need to take action, learn, and experiment to see positive changes in your life. Developing a bias for action, trying out new ideas, and honing your skills through experimentation are crucial for personal and professional growth. To navigate the uncertainties of the job market, it's advised to have a plan B. Consider side hustles or invest in skills that could generate income in the future. Consistent effort and progress, even if slow, can lead to the development of valuable skills that might evolve into future business opportunities. A sincere thank you for joining us until the end, showcasing your dedication to personal growth and wisdom. Your support not only broadens the channel's reach to a wider audience but also plays a pivotal role in fostering its continuous growth. As a token of gratitude, I commit to consistently delivering insightful book reviews sourced from some of the most impactful books in the world. Thank you for being part of this journey.